Well, thank you very much. I'm just so honored here today to give to begin this presentation, and especially on Self Preschool 3, which I think is today's most wonderful test and assessment that has ever been put together because it is truly that, a measurement test and a perfect assessment. Oh, wonderful. So I'm here today to thank you and everything. So a couple of disclosures here um, as we move forward. Uh, I happen to be co-author of Cell Preschool 3 and published by Pearson, of course. And uh, I do receive a royalty for um, my um, authorship of this test and co-authorship. And I honor Dr. Elizabeth Wade too, she, because she is uh, my, my just wonderful leader. And I thank uh, Patricia and Nancy for their participation today because they're both uh, outstanding clinical SLPs who are employed by Pearson and their leadership here has led this way down the track to become one of the best assessment ever, ever made. So thank you so much. And these are our disclosures today. So the learning objectives for today are three of them and they're actually quite clear. Um, the first one is to um, is, is, is for you today is to list three self preschool three subtests related to language readiness. And that is not just the measurement process for the, the language readiness. Number the second, uh, second objective is to explain how performance indicators in self preschool three provide unique information about language skills needed in pre K or K through two classrooms. Objective number three is to describe two recommendations for the, for the, uh, for all of this and uh, whose test scores for two recommendations for a child whose test scores was low or was really in the 80s and who struggles to keep up with curriculum requirements in the classroom. So this one, I think you're gonna like, it's gonna be absolutely practical. Thank you so much. Let's move on to the next one. So the agenda today is a pretty good one. We did one hour, we're gonna get all this done. And uh, we're going to the first 10 minutes is going to be an overview of school readiness versus academic language readiness. The second 10 minutes, second 10, 15 minutes though, is going to be up to 125 language skills related to academic language readiness assessed with this test, Cell Preschool 3. Then from 125 to 135, we're going to go over language skills needed for success in pre-K and K through two classrooms. Then, uh, then we're gonna have the practicality aspects as we move forward toward the end of this presentation from 135 to 145, we'll do one, one case study. From 145 to 155, we'll do a second case study. And I'm sorry, but 155 to only two o'clock, we're going to have until only five minutes because we've got so much content to cover. Okay, so preschool three is to examine academic language readiness. Uh, self preschool is a, is a practical tool that includes uh, structured, standardized measures, interactive, less structured measure, for example, story retell, retell, story retell and conversation, and observation of the child's behavior, which is done in the behavioral observation checklist, and parent or teacher report of the child's communication skills in different settings with different people. That is you done through the descriptive pragmatics profile. You're going to enjoy that. Test the reading, the test results of Cell Preschool 3 will enable you to do the following. The information obtained in the test enables you to measure skills and enable you to compare language abilities for same age peers. Determine how the child will be able to communicate and participate in classroom activities help guide recommendations for strategies to the teachers and parents. That's really important to guide, to guide recommendations for them. To share information with parents and teachers that support literacy skills, a child 
may not have been exposed to before starting school. Mm. May impact classroom performance, may or may not be related to a language difficulty and that the teacher and parent can use to support overall improved performance in the classroom. That is the idea that not many tests are able to come up with do, to, to do the measurement properties and the practical, practical every day, how to use it. Then today we're gonna to have some key takeaways. And th these are the things that are just really amazing. This test is used to assess language skills and includes subtests and practical application to domains that teachers and parents are concerned about. And uh, in school, communication skills, early literacy, and, le and learning behaviors. Um, when you present the test results to parents and teachers in connection with school and classroom skills, the test results become more relevant and actionable. And then finally, today, we're going to, you're going to leave with one really great key takeaway. When recommending strategies for improving school performance, we're going to teach you, hopefully, on to focus on a few things well. I did my national presentation on leadership. I did over 2,000 of them nationally and internationally, and I always ended with the most important thing that a clinical leader does is to focus and to just do a bunch of things where you work on getting them to do adequate, 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 and to learn that if you really want to make them do, do, do better, to learn how to do a few things extremely well. That's a real leadership issue. So thank you very much. And I'm going to turn it over to everyone else today and let them take you on this trip of excellence. Thanks, Wayne. All right, we'll go on to the next slide. Just want to let you all know too that well, we added a second case study to this presentation, but we didn't take out any of the slides we had covered before. So we always are told we talk fast. It's gonna seem a little faster today, but you have everything in your handout. If you end up printing out the handout and you have difficulty reading it at the end, my um, email address is there and I can send you a handout that has text in black and would be easier to read. So we wanted to make sure we were differentiating for you all the difference between school readiness versus what we're calling academic language readiness. So school readiness assessments that are out there, look at the five major areas that you look that you're looking at for preschoolers, especially. So cognition, language, motor skills, adaptive behavior, and social emotional skills. That's not self preschool is still a language assessment, a receptive, expressive, and social communication assessment. It doesn't cover all the school readiness areas, but what we refer to as academic language readiness, it's a self preschool three term, uh, but it's really a focus on does the student have the language and communication skills they need to handle the language requirements of the classroom. Let's move on. Um, so how did we identify these measures? It was done through factor analysis. So we looked at, we look at how subtests cluster. That's how we determine what constitutes a content um, language index, a language content index or a language structure index or the core. And so we did this also through factor analysis to identify subtests that uh, cluster together and have relevance for um, academic um, instruction. It's not a diagnostic category. So you wouldn't diagnose an uh, academic language readiness disorder. Uh, it really is used to describe language and socialization skills that are needed in the classroom. So some of the children we test are in those um, tests on the subtests that are looking at language development skills. They test in the 80s or higher, but their uh, teachers will refer them because they're really struggling compared to their other peers in the classroom. So we wanted to be able to identify those skills that really underlie children's ability to manage the language of the classroom. Um, and then this index score can, what we were hoping to accomplish with this index score is that you can take several of the subtests of self that really have a lot of relevance to teachers in the classroom 
and be able to discuss in more educational um, terms with the teams that you meet with when you're planning intervention for this child, either intervention, whether it's direct or whether you're just um, uh, talking to teachers and parents about how to support that child in the home and in the classroom. Um, okay, so mention these three things. The three norm subtests that cluster, were clustered by factor analysis are following directions, the descriptors, the descriptive pragmatics profile, and expressive vocabulary. The, um, there's an, also an early literacy index in Self Preschool 3 that includes phonological awareness and the preliteracy rating scale. And then there are other qualitative measures that support school readiness um, that do not provide norm scores, but provide qualitative information such as observational measures, connected the connected speech test, and um, the pragmatics activities checklist, the PAC. So these two indexes um, would help you and the professionals that you talk to make connections between the difference between developmental language skills, functional language skills, and the language skills that are needed for academic success. Um, and these scores a lot of times help you respond specifically to teachers' concerns about how the child is doing academically or what the underlying concerns are with language that affect academic instruction rather than having a developmental progression. Um, and it provides, because they're norm scores, it provides quant quantitative information about the child's skills. So the Academic Language Readiness Index, I think we cover a lot of, covered a lot of this already. It's these three subtests that you see on the screen. Let's go to the next slide. Uh, same thing here. This is where they show up on the list of, um, of subtests for the Self Preschool 3. And so those three are the ones that contribute to that score. Um, really, we just wanted to point out with these slides that for each of these subtests, both in Self 5 and in Self Preschool, um, Dr. Wiga really delineates what's the objective of this test? How does it relate to developmental skills, but also how does it um, relate to curriculum? And in addition, the last one was home and school activities. So for expressive vocabulary, if you're not familiar with Self Preschool 3, um, Oh, I don't know why the picture's not showing up, but, oh, there it is. <laughs> I was gonna say, what happened to the art? Uh, the child names an object, person, or activity portrayed in a picture. Um, it contributes to that academic language um, readiness, academic language readiness index. And then as far as content goes, several of the items that were really outdated looking were removed from Self Preschool 3. The calculator was often mistaken for a cell phone by children and many children have not seen newspapers or the kind of telephone that were depicted in the older test. This is the item analysis. So it shows you kind of the range of vocabulary that's covered on self preschool. So the test is for ages three through six. So it really starts out as you can see with, um, you know, simple um, nouns and verbs. And then um, the later items are just more sophisticated vocabulary if you consider six-year-old vocabulary sophisticated. In the in the test manual, as it is also for self, there are suggested modifications if you have the opportunity to do additional testing to see where, where does the child break down and what cues improve performance. So that's the purpose of the extension testing pieces in self is to um, try some other tasks um, looking at expressive vocabulary, for example, and then seeing if there are certain aspects of that task that can be changed to help a child um, um, manage those tasks better and provide guidance for what you say to the teacher. That it, so here's where we talk about uh, what do you learn from extension testing that informs supports in the classroom and at home? Because parents are often eager to know what they can do at home and Teachers may or may not be quite as eager, but they they do appreciate guidance on um, how to address some of the skills that we've identified as problematic for a child. So, um, so this information's in your handout. 
uh, using different word lists. This is the subtest on following directions. It has the explanation of really what we're trying to look at. It's, it's our, is a child able to um, interpret directions of increasing length and complexity? So not every teacher, even in, uh, you know, preschool through second grade classrooms necessarily produce shorter sentences and give shorter directions to children. When you sit in, a, even on a first and second grade classroom, uh, they're usually using multiple step directions. And so this is where a lot of times children break down in the classroom. Let's go to the next. Um, there are some familiarization items to make sure the child knows what the uh, vocabulary is in the test. If not, you don't administer the test. You just continue because the rest of the test will not give you the information you need if they don't know those that basic vocabulary. This is the item analysis. As you see, it has mostly to do with one, two, and three level commands that incorporate the different concepts um, temporal and conditional sequential concepts, mostly. In your handout, you'll see uh, specific examples of extension testing procedures to see where the child breaks down and what cues improve performance. And uh, some suggestions about, um, <laughs> I see a partial, I was partial sentence on our handout. Um, with, along with instructions about things to consider when you're thinking about what to suggest to parents and um, parents and helping the student at home and teachers with uh, children who have difficulties. The descriptive pragmatics profile, don't know why I keep tripping up on that one today, um, is a norm reference test now. It contributes to the academic um, language readiness score and here also, it delineates, it's looking at uh, common, common interactive communication skills. It's a checklist, but it is norm reference, so it provides a norm reference score. And this, these are just examples of a few items in the different parts of the test. These are the three major areas that are covered by the descriptive pragmatics profile, nonverbal communication skills, conversational routines and skills, and asking for giving and responding to information. And it may seem an interesting outlier as part of an academic language readiness score, but really children's interpersonal skills and behavioral skills in the classroom are what teachers really notice when those skills are poor. Um, so if you refer to your handouts, there'll be some examples of um, additional extension testing procedures. The early literacy index is comprised of only two subtests, phonological awareness, um, which is continued in self preschool three, and the pre-literacy rating scale, which was in the test before, but was not norm referenced before. So now you're able to get uh, scaled scores for each of these subtests and they contribute to an early literacy index that provides a standard score. Uh, the phonological awareness subtest. Let's let's look at the next slide. So I think as a speech pathologist, because that's most of the audience that's participating today, and any um, early reading teachers or early childhood people are familiar with uh, seeing phonological awareness as an early literacy indicator. Um, in this version of the test, it is also a scaled score that contributes to the standard score for the uh, for the early literacy index. Covers these areas that you see on the slide. Let's go on to the next. Um, some modifications of looking to see if there are um, supports that help the child do better at these tasks that you can share with a teacher or parent. Let's move on. Um, so the preliteracy uh, rating scale is intended to identify preliteracy skills that influence that may influence the development of reading and writing skills. So it's not a fully comprehensive measure. It's enough information to give you information you can use 
at a team meeting um, in conjunction with working with, with both the classroom teacher and any other special services the child's receiving. Um, this is ex an example of items. It's divided into two sections, early reading skills and early writing skills, and a couple of examples of those items. And then um, in your handout, you'll find some guidance on what are some things you might consider uh, getting information about or suggesting that would help a child improve in these areas. Go on. Oh, okay. That's the end of that section. Hopefully I left you some time, Patricia. Okay, yes. that's pretty good. <laughs> Great. Okay. Thank you. Yes. <laughs> thank you. So um, we'll continue to talk about the, uh, let's talk about the qualitative data that you can obtain relevant to classroom behavior. So the Self Preschool 3 can provide more relevant data related to school readiness by administering some or all of the following components of the test, the connected speech sample subtest, the pragmatic activities checklist, and the behavioral observation checklist. Um, these measures are criterion reference, so they're not part of the index scores but they do provide qualitative information that will provide additional evidence of a child's language readiness for school. And so um, looking at the connected speech sample and what it is more in detail, it is a story retail task. You can rate the child's performance in four areas. So you can look at story organization, um, their ability to recall facts and details, their use of story grammar and language structures. And this is an example of the rubric for scoring story organization and recalling facts and details. So there's criteria in each category. Um, and this is found in the record form under the transcribed language sample. So the clinician would use their judgment to rate the child's performance in these areas. The story grammar component is a scoring table also in the record form, and it can be used to score the story components included in the narrative, um, such as title, setting, characters, main idea. And this is what an actual record form example looks like. So the examiner will circle each component that the child used in their narrative and score each story grammar component according to the point values found in the scoring table. Sum the score points to compute the total raw score for the subtest and get an age-based criterion score for their performance on story grammar. There's also the language structures piece that you can analyze um, from the story retail. So this table is also in the record form and includes an adapted list of Brown's grammatical morphemes and other structures to rate the child's level of mastery as acceptable emerging or beginning for each structure listed. And so an acceptable use of a language structure indicates the child uses the language um, at a mastery level of 90 to 100%. Emerging use of the language structure indicates the child is in a transitional stage of development and demonstrates at least one correct production and beginning use of language structure indicates the child has not yet developed the skill and is unable to apply the structure in a, appropriate situations. So you can look at a few of these language structures or all of these language structures, depending on what the referral questions are um, and what needs to be answered. And then the pragmatic activities checklist is um, also an addition to, it's a new subtest. Um, but it's similar to the one that you see in cell five. Uh, the descriptive pragmatics profile differs from this subtest in that the descriptive pragmatics profile provides you with information about appropriate pragmatic behaviors that you've observed. And the pragmatic activities checklist is a list of atypical behaviors that you may observe during authentic conversational interactions. So this subtest will yield a criterion reference score, and this subtest is not factored into an index score, but it can provide qualitative information that may include evidence of a child's readiness for the classroom. 
to complete the subtest, um, you must engage the child in three activities for a, from a list of six provided in the record form. And you can make observations while taking part in interactive activities and throughout your time with the child, for example, meeting the child, walking back to the testing room, um, and, or during the administration of any of the self preschool three subtests. And each behavior on the checklist is noted as not acquired. So you would check any behaviors not observed during testing and keep in mind that these behaviors are developmental. So depending on the child's age, a checked item may not necessarily be a concern. When preparing to engage the child in these activities, uh, e note that each activity is designed to take no longer than five minutes. So you wanna use your judgment to determine when and how you engage the child in each activity. One possibility is to begin with one or all three activities to establish rapport with the child before beginning standard testing. Other possibilities include presenting each activity as a break in between subtest administrations, or you can choose to present all the activities after completing um, all of the subtest. You wanna carefully review the checklist before working with the child so that you can identify behaviors to watch out for and also provide the child with frequent opportunities to demonstrate those behaviors during the activities. These are the sections assessed using the pragmatic activities checklist and some items that go with each section. You can also document qualitative information about a child's behavior during the assessment. Um, on the record form, you'll find the behavioral observation checklist, and this includes space to document information about the child's physical activity level and also information such as their attention to task, response latency, and their general level of interaction. The checklist is not scored, but it does provide useful information about readiness for the classroom. The information can be a useful comparison for teachers and parents and also provide an avenue for communicating and strategizing with parents and teachers on how to best support the child at home and in the classroom. After testing, as part of putting all the information together, we've included some questions to ask at, at the end. So what are the difficulties you observed? What strengths can be leveraged to help address difficulties in the classroom um, and at home? What facilitating techniques improve performance? And what behaviors did you observe that help or hinder communication and language performance? And you can also share information with parents and teachers, such as examples of how to present directions to the child. Would they benefit from shortened instructions or simplified vocabulary, for example? Provide scaffolding techniques and make sure that children have multiple opportunities for exposure to curriculum related tasks. And then also teach strategies for coping, compensating, and learning. So this is the first case study. This is Anna and she's four years, 11 months. The background information is that um, she has attended a full day preschool program for almost a year. Um, she is social. She likes playing with other children and singing and dancing. Her preschool teacher is reporting slower progress learning letters, shapes and numbers and parents report that she has a lack of interest with uh, reading books, um, engaging in book reading activities, and responds, I don't know, to many questions. They um, requested a language evaluation at a private practice. So based on the information provided by Anna's teacher and parents, the speech language pathologist administered a language evaluation to determine if she has a language impairment, um, and if she has the skills needed to manage the language requirements of the classroom. If, the, if a language impairment is present, what are, we wanna know the patterns of strengths and needs and any intervention recommendations that can be made based on the assessment. 
So this is the body of evidence that was collected to help make a diagnostic decision. The, the SLP gathered case history and background information from teachers and parents, administered the self preschool three, particularly um, did a teacher parent interview using the pre-literacy rating scale and uh, collected a language sample with the connected speech sample subtest. And these are the um, index scores. These are the core language and index score results after administering the self preschool three. Her core language scores in 81, um, the receptive language index score is an 88, and the expressive language index score is a 76, indicating performance um, within the average range for the receptive language index and um, low range for the expressive language index. The 12 point difference in performance between the receptive and expressive scores is considered significant using um, the pairwise comparison table on the record form. Additionally, less than 25% of children Anna's age demonstrates such a difference in scores. So in other words, her language difficulties are expressive in nature. The language content index score is an 84 and the language structure index score is a 79. Both scores indicate performance in the marginal below average range. Her early literacy index score confirms teacher and parent concerns with pre-literacy skills. So her score is a, a 74 within the low range of ability for children her age. And when we take a look at the subtest level, um, we can see that she demonstrated difficulties in using appropriate morphological structures such as evidenced by or evidenced by the low scores on the word structure subtest and the recalling sentences subtest where it was noted that most of her errors were not syntactic but morphological. And her phonological awareness skills are also an area of need. Information gathered from the pre-literacy rating scale also indicates a need for improvement. The um, teacher information on pre-literacy skills is, is reported and the overall score was less than the average performance. Both the phonological awareness subtest and the pre-literacy rating scale are part of the early literacy index score, which is ranked as being in the low range of ability. So when we interpret this information, we have to factor in the child's history and that she's been receiving direct instruction with this kind of content when some four-year-olds have not. Um, story grammar, her story grammar score is five and it's in the emerging range. But again, since the child has been in a preschool setting, it would impact the way you could interpret the score. So considering that she's four years, 11 months, and she's attended a structured, pre structured preschool program for almost a year, it's important to note that she'll need to transition soon from an emerging development stage to a more adequately um, developed narrative skills to meet expectations for children who are five years old. Um, so there's information about her story organization and her ability to recall facts and details. And uh, additionally, the analysis of the language structures used in her story retell in the connected speech sample uh, was also performed in comparison with her performance on the word structure subtest. And that analysis confirmed that Anna's use of plural and possessive nouns, as well as the use of uh, some verbs, verb tense uh, structures are emerging slower than expected considering her age and exposure to the preschool curriculum. So based on Anna's standard scores, as well as overall assessment information, it was determined that she was eligible for language services and she would benefit from direct language instruction provided by an SLP to address her needs in expressive language and pre-literacy skills to enable her to meet the language demands of the classroom. It's also recommended to 
target goals and objectives specifically toward the use of morphology and syntax and to increase phonological awareness as well as letter number recognition. Anna's assessment results evidenced by the early literacy index score also suggest that she may benefit from increased support at home in the classroom and in the classroom for reading and writing activities. Close progress monitoring by the classroom teacher and, and consultation with the SLP is recommended. Providing parents with reading and writing activities through age appropriate stories is recommended to also support goals and objectives. And our next and final case study is Joe. He is six years, four months. This is a little bit of history and background on Joe. He is completing first grade and moving on to second grade next fall. He is has been previously diagnosed with a language impairment and is currently receiving speech and language services. Parents noted, have noted a significant improvement in his ability to converse and tell them about his day at school. So that's very positive. And he's also shown some improvement in using grammatical forms. Um, parents are formally requesting an updated language evaluation through a school planning meeting. So the SLP administered a language evaluation to determine if he continues to present with a language impairment. And if one is present, what are the areas of strengths and needs? We also uh, need to answer if he's made progress in language since his last evaluation using some empirical evidence and um, determine what recommendations can be made based on his performance. Joe's core language score is an 81, and it falls within the marginal below average range compared to same age peers. The receptive language index score is 73, and the expressive language index score is 77, indicating performance within the low range for both receptive and expressive indexes. The Language content index score is 69 and indicates performance in the very low range. The language structure index score is 80 and indicates performance in the marginal below average range. Um, the 11 point difference in performance between the language content index and the language structure index scores was present in less than 15% of children in Joe's age, children Joe's age in the standardization sample. And so this analysis suggests that language structure, meaning morphology, syntax, is a relative strength as compared to language content, um, vocabulary, and, and semantics. The academic language readiness index score is a 78 and indicates performance in the marginal below average range. And early literacy index score is 76 and indicates performance in the low developmental range. The results, um, this is a subtest breakdown, and the results of the connected speech sample subtest were analyzed um, as well. So a criterion reference score of nine for story grammar indicated that Joe's narrative skills are at a beginning level and inadequately developed for his age. Joe's story parts were organized in an emerging pattern, and some details were recalled but were inconsistently distributed throughout. Um, an additional analysis of the language structures used in his story retail was performed in comparison with his performance on the word structure subtest. And the analysis confirmed that Joe has mastered using several language structures. Um, these results from the connected speech sample subtest also um, are consistent with parent, parent reports as well as the results of the word structure subtests that indicate that he uses past tense ED verbs and other language structures appropriately. Uh, additionally, the results of the connected speech sample subtests are consistent with teacher report that Joe needs direct instruction to improve his ability to sequence events. Joe's scale scores for sentence comprehension, word structure, and expressive vocabulary subtests have not changed since his last evaluation 
resulting in the same core language score of 81. However, the increase in growth scale values that I'll show on the next slide across all subtests indicate that Joe is acquiring new language skills consistent with what his parents have noted and reported as well as the information provided through progress notes on goals and objectives. So a lot of times when we have a reevaluation and we come up with scores that are similar, um, I think it's, it's difficult to explain that a child is still making progress, but not necessarily following the same trajectory as um, their same age peers. So they're on the right, he's on the right track and showing improvement, um, but not as quickly as, um, as his same age peers. So although he continues to rank in the marginal below average range for overall language functioning based on the self preschool three core language score, he demonstrates progress in acquiring language skills as evidenced by increasing growth scale values. And growth scale values increase when the child earns additional raw score points, allowing for the comparison of changes in the child's performance from one assessment to the next. Unlike scaled scores or standard scores that compare a child's performance to those of their same age peers. GSVs were computed for all subtests administered for future comparison and reporting. So based on assessment information, Joe would benefit from continued direct language instruction to address needs in language content areas and pre-literacy skills. It is recommended to target goals and objectives specifically toward the use of age-appropriate vocabulary, following directions, understanding semantic relationships, and phonological awareness. Joe may benefit from interactive storytelling activities and listening to books read to him. In these activities, the pictured context support learning and understanding new concepts and age appropriate vocabulary. Providing parents and teachers with information on specific appropriate story reading and storytelling activities is recommended. Scores on the academic Language readiness index suggests that Joe would benefit from accommodations to the curriculum, including the use of simplified vocabulary and instructions. And based on the scores uh, on the early literacy index, progress monitoring and follow up is recommended in the areas of reading and writing. All right, so we did really well on time. Really? <laughs> yes. <laughs> Packed a lot of information in a short amount of time. Um, so if there are any questions, we'll open it up. And also just a reminder that when you print out the handout, we had a dark background with white text and someone had gotten in touch with us that it was hard to read on their printer. So if you need one that's all black text, um, email me. So I'm Nancy Castilla at Pearson.com. I think this is the first time, A, that we finished with enough time for questions, um, but B, that we also don't have, <laughs> we don't have a bunch of questions to answer. So we hope you enjoyed today's presentation. If a question comes to you, as in a vision later in the day, you can email one of us. Um, but we really appreciate you joining us today. Have a great afternoon. Thank you. Thank you very much. <laughs>